Hi everybody, this is Lucas, and I think it's time for a new Studio One workflow video for all of you who are into templates. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how you can work with customized templates, how you can access them extremely fast, and how easy it is to build your own searchable library of track templates, instrument presets and loops, effect chains, and basically anything that you can import into your Studio One song. Let's take this song I'm currently working on. And here I am looking for a nice plucked string sound, not an acoustic guitar, but something more electronic that still sounds organic. And I know that I have recently used a similar sound in another song, but I don't remember the exact name of the preset. And in this case, I can use the Files tab of the Studio One browser. If you haven't checked out the Files tab yet, you definitely should because it's really an absolutely underrated feature in Studio One. The Files tab is basically a file browser, but it can do a couple of things that Explorer or Finder won't do. And as you can see, I've got some tabs right here, such as orchestra templates, sample libraries, there I obviously have all my sample libraries, and this one is called Songs. And that's actually the folder where all my Studio One songs are stored. And here I can, of course, go into the different folders and grab some files and just add them to my song. But I can also search for songs with this icon. For example, the song I've recently made is called Diary Secrets. It was kind of a hybrid orchestra track. Here it is. And here I can right click one of the results and say, show in context. And this brings me to the actual folder of this song. And now watch this. I can take this song and expand it just like a regular folder. And now Studio One basically shows me the structure of this song without even having to load the whole song file first. And we can see the different tracks. And here are two audio tracks. And if I don't know which track this was because it's only called Contact, I can just drag it into the song and listen. And we also get the folder tracks, easily to see because of this icon here. And here are the strings presets I was looking for. And now I remember it was either Magic Harp or Childhood Memories. But it's easy enough to just select both of them and track them into the song and see which one fits best for my song. So that's a really convenient way to borrow tracks and instruments from other songs without having to save presets for them first. And I can even take a whole folder and drag it into my song. For example, maybe I want to use the same string section I already used in another production. And then I just take the folder. I don't need to select all the tracks. I just grab the folder and drag it over into my arrangement. And this takes a few seconds because all the samples have to be loaded. So now I have the entire folder with my full string section and with all the instruments loaded. Okay, it now has imported all the events as well. I just wanted the tracks, but that's no problem because I can just click this folder event and this is a container for all the events, so to say. So when I click this folder event, it selects all the events on all tracks in this folder. And then I can just delete them and I can go on with my strings. So this is extremely useful for importing stuff from other songs. And that's still not all, because maybe these are kind of my signature sounds and I know I will need them on a regular basis. What I can do now is right click this folder and say new tab from here. And this makes this folder a new root tab. So if I need one of these sounds again, I can just go into the files tab and select this folder. It's now part of my personal library. So you can create root tabs in the file browser for anything you want. It can also be a folder track within a song, or it can be mixer channels of a song. Here, for example, are the presets and inside are the single channels. So when I expand one of them, let's say main, 
this is basically the effect chain of my main channel, of my master channel. And I could just take this folder and drag it into the insert slot of one of my channels. And of course, you can also just take a folder on your hard drive and make it a root tab. For example, I made a folder with some music loops I've created and that I'd like to have as my personal loop library, also in different categories. And this is now a root tab in my files browser, so I can access all my music loops super, super fast. If you don't know Music Loops, by the way, Music Loop is a special Studio One container format that includes MIDI, an audio mixdown of the MIDI, and all the preset and effect data. So I can preview all these Music Loops just like an audio file. And if I like one of them, maybe this one, oh, I really like this one, then I can drag it into my song, and now I have the original part with all the notes and the instrument. So that's again super useful. Now you might say this browser toolbar is quite small, so you can just have one or two tabs in it. But actually not, because you can click this little arrow right there, and this opens up a list of all your tabs. And you can also rearrange these tabs, or you can rename them. Maybe let's just call this tab strings, because that's what it is. So yes, as a template user, that's really, really a great way to work. And one of the best things is that you can organize this exactly the way you like it. You can make your own folders, you can put presets or music loops in these folders. And don't forget about the search function, because it works in any folder. So for example, if I need piano loops, I just enter piano, and it will show me all the results in my music loops folder. So that's how you can use your folders and songs and even parts of your songs as a template. I hope this was useful. Don't forget to press the like button for the video and to subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss new videos in the future. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.